Hello everybody, welcome back. Uh, th this is going to be part three of this generator uh, installation on the on the RV. The new generator came in, and I've been running uh, run it, running it through its break-in period. Let's go in here for just a minute. There it is. That's the old 3100. That's seven years old. Uh, it's borderline of being able to run the uh, the air conditioner. It sometimes starts it, and sometimes it doesn't. I think that seven-year-old might be getting a little bit tired. I have no idea how many hours are on it exactly. I, there's no hour meter built in to let me know, you know, how many total hours it has on it or when to change the oil on it. Uh, you know, you have to keep track of that stuff on paper, I guess. Uh, that's the really only complaint I have about these champions, but obviously I bought another one. I'm really happy with its performance and reliability in seven years time that thing has, uh, has served me well but i think it may be starting to get a little bit tired anyway this one i've run uh for five hours the recommended five hours for the break-in period uh you're not supposed to exceed 50 percent load and uh run it at variable uh uh load so uh, I've run some small, the small window air conditioner, which takes a lot less power. It, you don't even know it's running. This, this, this has a lot of power. It's, it runs good. Um, then I turn it off and run some other things, uh, just to have a varied, the break-in period is supposed to be, uh, variable or varied loads. Uh, so anyway, that's done, but I need to change the oil on it. Um, today we might test out the system outside, with the 3100 uh, for all I'm doing it's it, it's fine it still runs good uh let me see here I did change the oil on the older one while I was uh running that one through the break-in period so it's it'll be a good backup generator for around the house here or the garage and you know power outage or bad storm or something it'll uh it's still a pretty good generator but let's go back out to the RV okay lots happened here uh, we left. I think we uh, last left off with getting the uh, this fan more permanently mounted. Got all the screws in it. Got all the uh, uh, the fan mounting screws in it. I've went ahead and it's been a crazy busy week, and I just kind of worked at this uh, off and on as I could as I could. But I guess to complete the uh, the fan part of this, what I've done is uh, I've run uh, in secured these uh the lines to it up to this terminal block and then uh it jumps over here and the 12 volts runs over into the next compartment where there's a a 20 amp power supply and we'll get to that in a second and to feed that power supply i've borrowed uh 110 volts from the regular house power okay that's uh i, I still have to put that new plug end on here but uh, this one's still working for now, but yeah, seen better days. Well, I'll, I'll get that fresh plug on there. But so when the generator's running, it'll supply 110 to here, uh, which will go out here to that power supply. Then it'll feed the 12 volts back in here to the fans. So these fans will be activated only when the generator's running and supplying the 110 to the 12 volts and back down. So that's how that uh, the fans are going to work. Uh, the exhaust system, <laughs> okay. Kind of hold down through here. I was going to put header wrap on here, and I still might. But uh, you'll see on the new generator, I have that adapter uh, flange that bolts on the muffler. And then when this when it's sitting in here, it actually comes to about here. So I just you know move this forward on it, put the clamp on it, and that's hooked up. But that all runs underneath and uh comes out right here so that's a lot less heat in this compartment so uh i think i'm going to bring out the old uh the 3100 and maybe just start that up and and show you how this uh at least how the fans work it's it worked out pretty good i'm not going to put it in here and hook the exhaust up well i don't even have the adapter on the 3100 the adapter's on the 3500 so uh, we're not going to demonstrate that, at least just not yet. Anything else happen in here? Uh, well, I did get that assortment in for all the uh, all the hold downs to 
properly mount everything. And I got one here on this cord here so that cord doesn't accidentally uh, fall in and rub on a fan. Uh, the fuel lines over here, they're uh, the fuel line in the uh, in the uh, the 12 volts to run the fuel pump to the switch. That's all, uh, you know, securely mounted and everything. Somebody had a really good idea about this here. Uh, the dilemma was how to put this up out of the way and, and attach it securely. Somebody had a really good idea. I loved it. Uh, but I didn't go with it, at least not yet. Uh-oh. There's geese flying over. Uh, one of those retractable, uh, like, badge uh, or keychains. I didn't know, wasn't sure how to mount that, but I really love the idea of it's just auto, it's just spring loaded and auto retracting. When I fill the uh, generator up with gas and then it just automatically retracts. I really, really like the thinking behind that and that, that idea. So uh, I'm, I haven't abandoned that idea completely, but I found these weird rubber straps online. I looked for, uh, and I put two of them on there. I looked for, um, like, uh, I searched for a rubber lasp. Uh, I think that would get me started on these types of uh, hold downs, but that's all I came up with for right now. But I think I'll get the job done. Uh, let's go over to the next compartment. And I'll show you what's going on over there. Ah, oh, there's something else really cool over there. Okay, there's the uh, the plug I, that new uh, plug I just need to put on. I'll I'll get to that. But here I solved the problem with the hour meter. Okay, those generators don't have an hour meter, and uh, so I bought. Uh, an independent one and uh, that runs off of 12 volts and you know here's where that 110 uh, comes in and here's where the 12 volt goes out but and I do have an inline fuse here just kind of wound up and tucked out of the way so the fans are fused um, so yeah the 110 comes in to this uh, 20 amp power supply and it was only like 20 bucks on Amazon and uh, so, yeah, it converts the uh, 110 to 12 volts back out to the fans. Like I say, it's fused, but then I have another uh, on some different terminals. I ran the 12 volts down to the hour meter. So anytime that generator's running and spitting out 110 volts to here, to 12 volts to here, um, that's how we're going to keep track of uh, how many total hours are on the generator and uh, it's recommended to change the oil every 100 hours, so this way I'll be able to keep track of that. I'm, I'm kind of liking how this is all going together here. Let me back up for a second here. Uh, with those fans now permanently installed, uh, I did put some mud flaps kind of on here too, if you want to call them that, uh, to guard the fans from any uh, rocks getting kicked up from the front wheel. They're, let me go like this. Okay. Uh, that's quarter inch rubber sheet. I found that on Amazon as well. It was uh, a 12 by 12 inch square and I just cut it in half and made uh, two 6 by 12 uh, pieces and so that should protect the fans from from rocks. And I I also got some 8 inch uh, rubber strips and I used a uh, double sided monster or, what do I call it? Monster. It's Gorilla Tape. Double-sided Gorilla Tape. It's the, the heavier-duty 30-pound uh, weight. Uh, so two strips of the double-sided tape and two strips of eighth-inch um, rubber. And you know what? The generator just sits in here really nice. And it's, it's kind of trapped where uh, the wheels on the generator sit back here. And then the feet, the front feet on it sit up here. And it's really trapped. It can't. It can't move left or right anyway and and I do have uh, two straps I'm still gonna uh, strap it and then just snug them down just 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 snug and that generator is gonna ride in here really nice you know, it's not like the you know I'm driving the bounder like a madman and the generators flying all around I've, I've I've stored it in here in the past and it just stays put it, it doesn't go anywhere so um, and these rubber strips actually act like kind of like a a non-skid uh, surface, and, and just being snug down, it's I think it's gonna stay put really, really well. So, okay, so I have the 3100 out here and uh, plugged in. 
Let's see, that's on, on, gas is on. I don't know if I need to, pretty warm morning. I don't know if I need to choke or not. But I'm going to start this up. And as soon as it starts putting out power, them fans should come on and run. They're really not as loud as I thought they were going to be. There, we shut the fans off, or shut the generator off. The fans go off. So that system... Um, I'm pleased that worked out really well. Yeah, uh, I guess another idea for this was to put um, was to put slides like drawer, uh, drawer slides in here so that I could just slide the generator out, uh, whether to put gas in it or change the oil. Uh, the thing is, on these Champions, the way they're designed, the uh, the controls are all in the front, and then there's a, a maintenance uh, the service panels here in the back. So to change the oil, uh, it needs to do more than just slide, uh, slide out to, you know, even if they were on drawer slides and the whole thing slid out here, you still have to get around the back side and, uh, you know, it'd be, it'd be tough to, I guess I could stick my head up through here and, <laughs> and be working and trying to, you know, drain the oil and put the new oil in it and all that stuff. But really it just needs to come out. Uh, every hundred hours i'm just gonna take it out and sit it on the ground where it's easier to work on so uh the slide seemed like a lot of uh it really did seem like a good idea but it's just not gonna work out as easy as it sounds and the other thing about that too was the slides uh you know you need room for the slides to they probably need spacers actually to mount the slides up higher so the thing would even clear uh this ledge that the uh the door comes down on so it just didn't seem uh, worth the trouble, and I, I don't think it'd be uh, work out as good as as good as it sounds. But so this is gonna work. It's it's just not that hard to get in and out of here. So once every hundred hours, you know, I don't use the generator extensively. You know, sometimes it takes quite a while to get a hundred hours on it. You know, and I know that from how often I, you know, when the own and run generator did. You know, once upon a time, it did run somewhat reliable, sort of. <laughs> um, so I kind of know from that hour meter, you know, about uh, typical usage, how long it takes to get 100 hours on. Um, so that won't be too bad to just pull it out and service it once in a while. And really, all I have to do to take it out is um, to remove the two hold down straps and uh, loosen up my, uh, loosen up the two, or uh, you know, the two nuts on the exhaust clamp and, and pull that off. And I did set the other generator in here for just a, uh, a little bit, just to fit, you know, properly uh, fit this, you know, kind of to the right length. And I, I snugged that on there. And I don't want to over, ever over tighten this and then this be, you know, kind of crushed on there to where it's hard to get off. It, it almost, it fits snug enough to where this almost just stays by itself. But uh, I thought a clamp's a good idea and just snug it a little bit to, just to make sure. Um, but yeah, that's the only thing that really has to come off. And then, uh, you know, unplug unplug the thing. Take the straps off and pull it out. So it's not that big a deal. Now, I might have to make one more short video because I can't, I can't put the, the generator actually in just yet. I do need to change the oil on that before I put it in here. And I just, I just have something else going on too that... Um, there'll just be a slight delay on putting that in here Oof. but uh yeah i'll get that but i will get it in very soon um maybe tomorrow and actually get the thing in sh strapped down plugged in the exhaust on it and then we'll see how you know that all works all finally together so there'll probably be one more it'll probably be a really short part uh part four of this but that's where we're at now. Okay, I'll try to post some links in the down in the com or um, 
the video description uh some links to where about uh, some of this hardware i don't know if i'll catch everything uh because some stuff that i just picked up at a home improvement store and an auto parts store and amazon there's just parts came from so many different <laughs> I'll at least try to cover some of the parts down there. But, you know, it's not hard to find with just a Google search. Um, you know, those are radiator cooling fans. So they're heavy duty for this type of envi environment, the heat and dust and stuff, uh, if any. And uh, the 20, uh, 20 amp power supply. And I don't know. Anyway, we'll be back with part four very soon. I'll see you.